Thank you, choir, for reminding us of an awesome God that we have. And also the choir is awesome too, right? Thank you. Let us pray. Open our hearts, O God, open our minds, that the words that we hear will move us to offer you our praise and move us to be faithful to you. Amen. <clears throat> it is said that Psalm 45 is a love song. It was written at a time when the king was about to get married. The psalmist talks about a love that is stronger than death. Even chaos and flood waters cannot quench love. However, this morning, we do not have a wedding, but I would like to share two things that the psalmist says as we install our newly elected church leaders. In verse 7, it says, Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. The psalmist says that when God calls leaders, God anoints them. Thus for church leaders, God has anointed you when the congregation voted you to your positions. That means that God empowers you. We must remember this as we continue our ministry, which God has called us through Silliman University Church. You have been elected because of your special gifts. But by ourselves, by our human strength, nothing much can be accomplished. But because God has anointed and empowered us, we can accomplish great things together. In, the, in, in Cebuano, anointment meaning, meaning dinihugan. Kitag dinihugan sa Dios. We are anointed by God. When the electoral committee called people to serve, the usual answer is, I am too busy. I cannot give my time to the, to the church at this point. Or some would say, the job is too much for me. I need to learn more. Or sometimes the answer is not now. Or I have already done it before. I think I've heard this several times. I have done it before. Let the younger members do it now. Maybe we need to be reminded that when God chooses people to serve, God equips them and empowers them, whether you have done it before or whether you are still new. When God calls, it is God's time. Whether you are young or old, if you are called by God, it is always God's time. When Moses was called by God, he was just relaxing, tending the ship, married, thought that everything was okay. But then God called him. The 12 disciples were fishermen. Most of them were fishermen. But Jesus saw what they can do and be. God empowered them. And I am sure that God continues to empower us because God has anointed us. Several years ago, in the Reader's Digest, a lady reported searching for the perfect birthday card for her husband. Now she came across a very promising card. On the outside of the card, it read, Sweetheart, you are the answer to my prayers. Then she turned to the inside, which was inscribed like this. You are not what I prayed for exactly, but apparently you are the answer. Strangely, I think that must have been in God's mind when God called you to serve. 
Despite our limitations, God still calls us. And according to St. Paul, we are like clay jars. And this takes us to the second point. What knowledge we have and what power we have come from God. Many leaders think that the power they have emanates from them. And therefore, what happens would be chaos. And this is true also in the church. The church will be in turmoil when we believe that our power emanates from us and only from us. We need to acknowledge, and this includes pastors, that it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us. And thus, whatever we do must be used to glorify God. We are God's representatives in this world, and others will know who God is by the way we act. We are more like a ceramic jar with chips and cracks all over. And then in our midst comes a friend who is ready to take us even with our cracks, faults and all. The writer of the Christians in, in Ephesus explains that we are broken, bent, rusted, and cracked. That we are saved by grace. That is not in our own doing. It is a gift from God. There is a story about a man who stormed into a newspaper office holding a copy of the day's edition of the paper and demanded to speak to the person responsible for obituaries. He was referred to a cub reporter to whom, with much agitation, he showed a column that contained his obituary. You can see that I am very much alive. I'm standing in front of you. The reporter replied, I never retract an obituary. But I tell you what I'll do. I'll put you in the birth column in tomorrow's edition, and you are, will be given a fresh start. That is what Christ is offering to us, a fresh start with God-given gifts. The Holy Spirit takes the incredible truth of God, and in the right place, at the right time, in the right way, it gives to us in such a way that it can, we can use it to give it's the power that we need to be all that we need to be God's people. God's power makes us see the same things and hear the same words, but with a new understanding. Thus, when we become spirit-filled, we are to witness to the world as gifted and empowered believers. The nature of the gifts is varied and the purpose is clear, to build up the church of Jesus Christ. Crucial difference is not in the signs and wonders, but in the infilling of ordinary men and women, just like you and me, with the power of the Holy Spirit. God has anointed us. You don't have to be an elder. You don't have to be a deacon of the church. Whatever things that you do, God anoints you. You have the power to do great things singing in the choir, doing all those mission projects that we have. If you look at the Paris News, you'll notice that we have pictures of the ministry of Silliman University Church. If you look around on the campus, you will hear of people talking about the ministry that our church is doing. We have the Bible studies. We have other things going on, mission. In fact, just this morning, I was told, are we going and visit people? Yes. Each of us is called by God, and each is anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Roughly 100 years ago, there lived an American choreographer named Isadora Duncan. Miss Duncan is considered by many to be the creator of modern dance. Once when asked about the meaning of a performance she had given, she made a profound statement. She said, if I could say it, I would not have to dance it. Now, I cannot describe to you completely the power of the Holy Spirit, but I can show you the power of the Holy Spirit working in our church as we listen to each other's stories, as we watch the pictures in the ministry that we are doing, giving us a glimpse of what we as a church did for the last few years. As we look around the campus, we see the movement of the Holy Spirit through people who are willing to share of their gifts with others. All the activities that we have in this church, 
we have been given the power to serve God. Some of you gave your time. Some of you shared your gifts. Some gave part of your money. Some supported our work through your prayers. And with the new leadership, we hope to do more. Now, if you listen to the sound system that we have, you'll notice a big difference. There's a big difference because people contributed to make it better. All of this, this is the ministry that we have. This is the ministry that God has given us. And this is, we do these things because of the Holy Spirit anointing us. We have a power given to us as a gift. Let us open ourselves to it, receive it, and use it to the glory of God. Amen.